hey welcome back so as you know i'm fascinated with the history and secrets of macrohanish and one of the films i did recently was does macrohanish have an undersea submarine base uh the answer is probably no but I do think it has an underground operation centre. I personally know that a drift mine, a slopey mine, in the village of Macrohanish, exactly where I used to live, goes right underneath the base. So I think it's very possible that some underground storage, server farm, even hangar space for exotic aircraft. People have told me that there is an access to an underground area. So somebody watched the film, I mean, I made it months ago now, and in the comments on YouTube just said one word, Glenn Sander. Glenn Sander, discovered in Scotland. A place carefully chosen for its unique properties and the home of our super quarry. I happen to know where Glen Sander is. Again, it's slightly odd because my father, who obviously had a lot more to do with Macrohanish than we knew as a family, was also interested in Glen Sander. He hated it because it's one of the world's largest quarries. It's certainly the largest quarry in Europe. And it's in Argyle where we lived. So why did this anonymous viewer point me in the direction of Glen Sander Aggregate Quarry? Oh, I get it. Glen Sander has all the attributes for a secret submarine base. Let's go through them. Here it is, it's massive. And hang on a minute, you can't go there. There are no roads. It is completely cut off. It's in part of Scotland with no vehicle access. The only way to get to Glen Sander, the quarry, is by a daily shuttle service actually operated by the military. Here's the log of the wee boat that goes from Oban out to the Glen Sander quarry. Obviously, it's just full of people doing quarrying. Or is it? So what's special about Glen Sander? Now, first of all, if you work there or own it, I'm not saying it is a secret submarine base. I'm just saying it would make a good one. But the clues are all there. <laughs> Glen Sander is totally cut off from the rest of the world. Sea access only. It's on one of the deepest sea locks in the west of Scotland, right on the homeward bound course of any British nuclear or allied NATO submarine. But it's just a quarry. So I dug a little bit. Who originally owned it and you know how does it operate? And there's a connection between the quarry, either the owners or the material from the quarry. There's underground structures involved in their history. At the top end of the Clyde, this is where you keep your atom bombs. Not only British, but also American forward bombs. Forward bombs? That's when America is taken out and can still retaliate because there's bombs in Britain. They're dual key operation and they're stored underground in this hollow hillside, halfway between what was old Holy Lock US Navy uh, nuclear base and today Faz Lane where the British keep their nuke submarines. And in between there's a hollow mountain full of missiles and bombs. And then I read this in a Scottish newspaper, I think the Scottish Herald, they accused the Glen Sander quarry of actually being something else. And that is its future life. When quarrying is done, they'll have ended up building Britain's granite nuclear waste store in Scotland. Isolated, no road access, and very, very deep. The Scottish National Party, or SNP, are campaigning for a nuclear-free Scotland. For many years, Scotland has been a dumping ground for military waste and is the location of NATO nuclear bases. A group called the Scottish National Liberation Army claimed a bomb attack on the Glen Sander Quarry. The New York Times reported, A stone-crushing plant in Scotland was destroyed in the fire Saturday night. 
An anonymous caller said that the Scottish nationalists had blown it up because the quarry was going to be used as a nuclear waste dump. Ian Lawson, in a private blog, said, Since the commencement of nuclear power generation, a permanent site to store high-level radioactive waste for the next 100,000 years has never been identified. With deep water coastal access and granite strata, could Glensander, or similar, be the plan? I certainly would not bet against using a site like Glensander for multi-millennia nuclear waste storage. Both the alleged terrorist attack and the use of Glensander as a nuclear waste store has been vigorously denied by the quarry's owners. So I dug into UK government records. The DTI, or Department of Trade and Industry, published a report on the economic benefits available in the west coast of Scotland. The report specifically mentions Glensander and lists a military test area, X56240 Loch Linney, as available for submarine exercises. So the quarry is on the UK government's map, and the quarry's method of granite extraction will possibly leave large underground caverns. So there's definite evidence, other researchers have found it, of underground facilities at Glensander. How the quarry actually works reveals a lot of the underground facilities. The quarry's on the top of a hill, and the crushing plant and the dock is on the sea level. How do you get large lumps of rock from up there down to the crushing plant? Well, they're doing something unique, and it's technologically amazing. They've built a 1,000-foot shaft under the hill to drop the rocks down to the crushing plant so they don't have to have external conveyor belts. And just recently, I think last year, they've started building underground rock handling facilities. Again, in massive caverns, here's an entrance to one. So, Glen Sander, look it up on the map. Is it a secret submarine base? I've no idea. Could it be used as Britain's nuclear waste store? Uh, it's in a great place. It's in the middle of nowhere with no road access and it could be forgotten. So thanks to this viewer who pointed me in an interesting direction, we've discovered another interesting secret. The truth is out there.